we cover a lot of topics in this lesson, but they all come together into a conceptual model of how high pressure systems and low pressure systems work. And so I want to take a tour of a surface low pressure system and take a look at some of the different features so you can see how things fit together with a real weather system on real weather maps. Uh, we'll start at the surface here. This is a surface analysis from 12Z on February 13th, 2014. There was a strong area of surface low pressure along the east coast, right along the North Carolina-Virginia border. And this was a fairly significant storm. It dropped heavy snow from through the middle Atlantic. Some places got over two feet. Heavy snow up in, into New England with uh, blizzard conditions. Uh, so this was a, a pretty big storm uh, during February 2014. And to the south of this storm, to the south of the surface low, we have this blue line with blue triangles. That's the cold front signaling the leading edge of advancing colder air. Out ahead of it, we tend to have a warmer, more humid air mass. Perhaps maritime tropical would be fairly common. And behind it, we have an advancing colder air mass, commonly continental polar or even continental arctic air mass behind the front arriving. And we can see the temperature contrast here. Uh, to the east of Florida, temperatures are in the 70s. Go back into Florida behind the front, and we have temperatures actually in the 30s in northern Florida, so much colder air arriving behind that cold front. To the east of the low, the red line with the red semicircles, that's the warm front. That signals advancing warmer air. To the north of that warm front, the colder air is retreating, and it's the retreat of that cold air that actually allows the warm air to advance. Uh, we, so we have a maritime tropical air mass, warm and humid advancing, while the colder air mass, which is more dense, retreats. To the north of the warm front, we generally have overrunning upward motion as the warm air glides over the dense cool air near the surface and that often results in a large area of layered clouds which is what we had here on our infrared satellite image from February 13th. We see a big area of layered clouds to the north of the warm front. It's fairly common to start with very high thin clouds, cirrus clouds, uh, which thicken gradually into cirrostratus and then altostratus and then down into, cir into stratus clouds and uh, even nimbostratus clouds once steady precipitation begins north of the warm front. Meanwhile, along and just ahead of the cold front, we have a thinner band of clouds which is indicative of the showery weather that typically accompanies cold frontal passages. So in addition to what's going on at the surface, I also want to talk about what's going on at 500 millibars because that's also a very important part of uh, what strengthens the low and it's the low's development. So this is a 500 millibar analysis, shows 500 millibar heights uh, at 12Z on February 13th, 2014. We can see a deep trough over the eastern United States. That represents an area with cold air columns, which makes sense because the cold front was off the coast here, so behind it we have a cold air mass, and we have this deep trough that goes along with those cold air columns. While vorticity isn't analyzed on this map, I did put in with a red X where the vort max was with the trough axis here. So that you can see where it was. X is a common way to mark a vort max, although sometimes you don't get an X with a vort max and you have to actually examine the vorticity field to find uh, a vort max. But note that the trough axis at 500 millibars is well west of the surface low. The surface low was just off the coast here along uh, near where Virginia and North Carolina come together. So the trough was well to the west and that's a common orientation when a system is still strengthening because you get divergence to the east of the vort max and that divergence aloft uh, helps to remove mass from air columns and it helps reduce uh, the weight of the air columns and the surface pressure decreases and that really drives the system when you have strong upper level divergence that is uh, stronger than the low level convergence around the low the weight of air columns is reduced and you get a strengthening low so this fact that the trough is west of the surface low is the common regime that you see when a surface low is still strengthening.